Mantor Ministries presents the Mantor Guy Podcast. We may talk about football. We could mention bacon. We might reference Rocky movies. We'll probably discuss the Mantor conferences, but we'll definitely talk about how to grow in our walk with God. Here's your host, the Mantor Guy, Jamie Holden. Welcome back, guys, to the Mantor Guy podcast. I'm Jamie Holden, and it's great to be back with you once again this week. I'm excited to be back with you again this week as we start part two of our series on maintaining a kingdom perspective. Last week, we brought you our first five nuggets of truth on what we need to do to develop an outlook on life that focuses on advancing God's kingdom. And this week, we'll look at our next five principles of living with a kingdom perspective. Let's get started, guys. The first thing we want to look at this week is if you can't function as part of a team, then you can't function in God's kingdom. Guys, the last thing that God's kingdom, or honestly anyone else needs, is another man who looks out for himself first, often at the expense of others. It is frustrating, it's annoying, and eventually it's detrimental to the team. I once worked with someone who was unable to function as part of a team. Every action, every decision, every choice this person made was based on what was best for him or what advanced him the most, leaving the rest of the team feeling frustrated, angry, and annoyed. Life, especially life when you're following God and walking in the calling that he's designed specifically for you, needs to revolve around working together and helping others. We should work as a team, doing whatever it takes, whatever is necessary to advance God's kingdom. If you see something needs done, then just do it. Don't stand around saying it isn't your responsibility or your job. Just do what needs to be done. Remember, Jesus could have told any of the other disciples to go get the bucket and wash everyone's feet. But he didn't. Instead, he grabbed a towel and he did what needed to be done. I personally refuse to minister with anyone who has this attitude. I've had some very influential and noteworthy speakers not get invited back as a speaker at Mentors because they were either rude or mean to the rest of our team. They came with an attitude expecting to be served and praised. I like working with speakers who come with an attitude to serve, not to be served. I don't do green rooms for our speakers. I have them out mingling with the men. If they want to be on the mentor team, then they better be prepared to serve and work together for the betterment of the men attending and the event as a whole. Guys, just remember, if you set yourself up in a me-against-the-team attitude, you will quickly find yourself all alone as your team leaves you behind. This applies to your family relationships, your work relationships, your ministry relationships, your church relationships. Nobody wants to work with somebody who always puts themselves first. But if you're a team player who works well with others, you're going to be an unstoppable force in God's kingdom. Philippians 2 verse 3 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. So God, remember, you need to be able to work with a team and not have a me first mentality. Our next nugget of truth that I want to share with you this week is kingdom perspective requires a good work ethic. Guys, no matter what area of your life we're talking about, whether it be your career, areas of ministry God has you, a hobby, a club, a sports, anything that you're dealing with in life, talent can only carry you so far. But without a good work ethic, all the talent in the world is useless. To do well in God's kingdom, you need to know what it means to work hard, to do a job to the best of your ability, and to spend time in preparation. All the talent in the world cannot conceal a bad work ethic or being unprepared. You know, guys, I once worked with a young man. He was very talented, but he refused to prepare or plan. And at first, he could pull off his job without putting in a lot of work. But over time, his lack of a good work ethic started shining through, and his talent was soon overshadowed by the obvious lack of preparation and hard work that should have been done behind the scenes. And as a result, he lost his position. He made the fatal mistake of thinking talent is all you need. Men, it isn't. 
Hard work, planning, and follow-through will carry you further than talent ever could. Talent may get you through college, talent may even get open doors for you, but it will never be enough to get you through the days and years of life serving the kingdom. Guys, you gotta develop a good work ethic. Ecclesiastes 9.10 says this, Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. And this verse leads us to our next nugget of truth, and that is, if you're going to do something for God's kingdom, listen to these three words. Do it right. Let me say that again. If you're going to do something for God and his kingdom, do it right. Guys, if I had a dollar for every time my mom said this to me growing up, I'd be a very wealthy man. This was her motto in life. And to be honest with you, growing up, it wasn't my motto, and we had many arguments about it. However, over the years, I began to see why she drummed this lesson into my hard head. And I'm eternally grateful for her for this lesson. You see, now I'm the one in charge, pushing people to do things and do them well. I have realized recently that I too have adopted this attitude in my life and I expect it from others around me. Seriously, guys, why would I go through the effort and the work? Why would anybody go through the effort and work if you're only going to do a mediocre job? God deserves the best. Aim for excellence and accept nothing less of yourself. You will develop a reputation for excellence and hard work and people will respect you and want to work with you again. So guys, remember, if you're going to do something for God's kingdom, do it right. Well, guys, we're going to be back with this week's final two points right after the break. I know you're going to dig this. Like what you're hearing? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. Men of God, it is time to rise and shine. Join us for the 2021 Mantor Spring Conferences, where we'll be discussing this year how men of God need to stop dimming their light, they need to stop burning daylight, and it's time to rise and shine. God has called us to be light to a dark world. It's our call, it's our mandate, and it's our mission. Visit MantorMinistries.com for all the dates, locations, and speakers at for this year's Rise and Shine Mantor Conferences. Men, you do not want to miss it. Make sure that you are at your local Mantor Conference in 2021. No more burning daylight, guys. It's time to rise and shine. For Mantor Conference dates and locations, visit MantorMinistries.com. Don't forget to visit iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. Guys, we have something brand new for you as we head into 2021. For the first time ever, Mantor Ministries has put together a one-year Bible reading plan called Burning Daylight. This 365-day Bible reading plan will consist of six days of Bible reading specifically planned for men and one day of a devotional each week for all 52 weeks of the year. It is completely free. You can sign up for this daily Bible reading plan at mantorministries.com slash Bible plan today. It's time we know what we believe as men of God, and we develop our convictions, and these convictions are developed through God's Word. And to develop these convictions, you got to know what the Bible says. So sign up today for our free one-year Bible reading plan, Burning Daylight, at mantorministries.com Bible plan. That's mantorministries.com slash Bible plan. The Mantor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God. Hey guys, Jimmy Holden here, the Mantor Guy. And you know, so often men tell me that they can't afford to use covenant eyes. And my immediate response back is, dude, you can't afford not to use covenant eyes. For 53 cents a day, you can protect every computer, every laptop, every tablet and cell phone that you and your family own from the trap of internet pornography. I tell them for 53 cents a day or $16 a month, you can make sure your little girls never stumble onto pornography as she uses Snapchat or does any internet searches while doing her homework. For 53 cents a day, you can make sure your son never falls into the trap of pornography or even sees it accidentally while online. 
I say for 53 cents a day, you can protect your wife from getting trapped in the trap of internet porn and protect your marriage. And I tell them for 53 cents a day, you can help break the cycle of internet pornography that's been holding in your life. Guys, you and your family, and most importantly, your walk with God, cannot afford for you not to use Covenant Eyes. So, head to MantorMinistries.com and hit the Covenant Eyes button in the upper right-hand corner to get one month of free service. Try it out. I know you're going to love it. You're never going to regret it. Guys, do it today. You can't afford not to have Covenant Eyes be a part of your life. Listen to the Mantor Guy podcast on the go via Apple Podcast and Google Play. Thanks. Men of God, we can't keep burning daylight. It's time to rise and shine. Mantor Ministry presents Burning Daylight, the Godly Man's Call to Rise and Shine. This is the most important book we've released yet as we give a rallying cry to God's men to throw off all complacency and rise and shine. This book is designed to help you know what you believe, why you believe it, and how to recognize the false teaching of progressive Christianity so you don't fall into its trap. It's time we rise from our beds and shine bright to a dark world. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com slash burning daylight. No more burning daylight, men. It's time to rise and shine. Welcome back to the Mantor, Mantor Guy Podcast. Podcast. Welcome back, guys, as we continue with our series on developing a kingdom perspective. So far this week, we have discussed the need to work as part of a team, to have a good work ethic, and to do things right the first time. And now we're going to continue on and look at our next kingdom perspective point, and that is that kingdom perspective requires a disciplined life. You don't want to be a flash in a pan. You want to run a marathon, not a sprint. Guys, Life, especially when you're walking in your particular calling that only you can do, it's a marathon. This sentiment was spoken to me by one of our speakers at a mantor conference, and he was right. Too many of us approach life like a sprint. Whether it be in a career or doing the calling that God has called us to do, we want instant success. We want instant success, huge numbers, and lots of followers. We measure success in the number of Facebook or Twitter followers that we have. And often, we do anything we can to achieve success, even watering down the message of Christianity to others. However, many people with this attitude, they soon fizzle out as they produce weak Christians. They don't fulfill the call that God has for them in their life, whether it be in ministry, in career, in relationships. Because they're not living a disciplined life, it affects everything. They don't approach their calling like it was a marathon and strive for slow, steady progress. Life is a marathon, guys, not a sprint. Another part of this kingdom perspective is we need to realize that our body belongs to God and we need to take care of it so we can endure the marathon. This is a huge battle for me personally. One my mentors are constantly pounding into me. I so love the work in ministry and what God has called me to do, and I waited so long for doors to open for me to do ministry that I tend to overwork myself to the point of exhaustion. When we first started doing our conferences, I went four months without taking a day off, and it almost killed me. But since then, I've realized the need to treat kingdom life as a marathon, and I had to learn to pace myself. I am learning the importance of a day off, of time spent reading and refueling spiritually. My mentor Tom Reese said to me, Are you in this for the short term or the long haul? I want you in it for the long haul, but if you don't take time to rest, you're going to burn out and you're not going to make it. I took his words to heart, and I have been making changes in my life and schedule to make sure that I endure this marathon and I don't give it all up in the first 100 yards. It's not a 100-yard dash. It is a marathon. Remember, Genesis 2, 2 2-3 says, By the seventh day God had finished the work he'd been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all of his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Guys, if the God of the universe felt he needed to take some rest, how arrogant are we if we refuse to do the same? And guys, the final nugget we're going to talk about this week, the last point I want to discuss with you before we end for the week, and next week we'll pick it back up again, but it's this. Don't put God in a box. 
This is one of the best pieces of advice anyone ever gave me, so I wanted to pass it on to you. Often we look at our almighty, all-powerful God through human eyes and expect Him to work in ways we can see or we can comprehend. However, we can't put God in a box. I have learned that God really does things the way we think, expect, or can understand. I realized that this week with everything going on with my dad. I did not see any of this coming with the infection and the foot amputation. I didn't see any of this coming. And I had to realize that God does things His ways, and we can't always understand His ways. We have to instead understand that God will move, and often we're left looking in awe and amazement at what He has accomplished. We can't put God in a box. Instead, we need to follow Him wherever He leads, however He leads. Remember, guys, God is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to his work that is within us. And we read that in Ephesians 3, 20. So guys, don't put God in a box. He has so much power. He sees things we can't see. He understands things we can't understand. Trust in him and don't try and put God in a box. The Mentor Guy's Final Thought. Guys, I really hope these nuggets of truth about living with a kingdom perspective are hitting home with you. We are halfway through this series. We've looked at 10 points so far. And as we move forward, I encourage you once again to examine your life against the next five that we talked about today and see what areas you can make changes in to better serve God and walk in His calling. Examine yourself. See what changes can I make. How can I better develop this kingdom perspective? And we'll pick up next week again and look at five more points of what it means to have a kingdom perspective, guys. But for this week, we are unfortunately out of time. Once again, thank you for listening, for giving me your time today to listen. I would love it if you took a second and shared this podcast to your social media accounts. We would love to be able to reach even more men and help them grow in their walk with God. Man, don't forget to subscribe, leave a five-star rating, and leave a review on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. You can also hear the podcast on Amazon Music and Spotify. Guys, the more reviews and ratings we get, the better men can find us in their searches, and the more men can grow in their walk with God. So don't forget also, guys, mentor conferences are days away. Go to MentorMistress.com to learn about your local mentor conferences, who the speakers are going to be, where they're going to be, what options are available for you and the men in your area to come together and be ministered to and learn how to rise and shine. Guys, just check it out. All that's at MentorMistress.com. But once again, guys, thank you for joining us. and We'll see you next week on the Mentor Guy Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Mantor Guy podcast. Be sure to visit MantorMinistries.com to learn more about our books, men's ministry resources, and our Mantor conferences. Hey guys, Jamie Holden here. Did you know that only 10% of churches have a healthy, thriving men's ministry? That's only 1 out of 10 churches. Well, my mission is to see this number become 100%. Join me in my work with HGUS Missions to help develop men's ministry in the local church. Become a monthly financial investor in the work God called me to do by going to mentorministries.com slash partner and clicking on the Give Online button. Together, we can see God continue to move among men. One more thing before I wrap up this week, guys. You need to head to CovenantEyes.com and sign up today to protect you and your loved ones and the many traps are waiting you on the internet. You know, I am a Covenant Eyes user. I just signed my 69-year-old father up and put Covenant Eyes on his phone and his laptop. I believe in it. It's an amazing tool. It helps you stay pure online. Guys, I encourage you to try it today. If you use the code MANTOR, you get 30 free days. That's 30 free days. What do you have to lose? So head to CovenantEyes.com. Try it today. Like I said, what do you have to lose, guys? The Mentor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God.